Good morning. It's Tuesday, July 12th, and I am recording this message uh, in response to a request to pray for a good friend who is asked me to pray for a relationship that is uh, going through a lot of turmoil, and um, she knows I pray. She said that she feels that I'm sensitive. So, my dear friend, this is for you. But in you, I hear me and so many of the women that turn to me to share their brokenheartedness. Because that's what I hear in your words spoken and written. As I told you, I, I woke up um, and you were just with me in my wake up. Now the day before the Lord had, I woke up, I was swimming in the most delightful waters. Of course they weren't real waters, I don't even know how to describe them. They were living waters. And then the Lord kind of revealed to me that Yes, these are the waters um, that are in Mary's womb. So I'm swimming around, free, happy, carefree. And, and then I realized what I first called it was swimming in the sacred heart of Jesus. I didn't see Mary's womb at first. And it's, it, that didn't come to later. And then I realized as I reflected on it, the Lord kept revealing little pieces of where this what this was I realized oh he's swimming in these waters too as Father Boniface Hicks invites us to uh, become enwombed in Mary and twin with Jesus that's what was happening it's like Jesus and I were both being formed and conceived in Mary's womb which of course for us is a spiritual conceiving but for him it was a Physical and spiritual conceiving. Yeah, it blows your mind when if you go too far with that stuff. But all I can tell you is that was my experience. So, um, the and then the next day I wake up with words from my friend. And I know that she will be watching this. So I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. And um, what I sensed was brokenheartedness. Your broken heart uh, you acknowledge to me that you knew you were wanted by your parents and desired and then I shared with you how I didn't have that experience that I didn't know what I had but through prayer the Lord realized the Lord made me see my mother was so uh, was raised in such a way that conceiving life was foreign to her whole experience, conceiving anything. And I'm the first of 13 children in 15 years. So the first experience of life within her, her automatic response was rejection. But I was the one that this life was being, within this, in my life was being rejected. I never knew, could never figure it out. And then the Lord showed it to me and let, healed it and enabled me to move beyond that and to see my mother through his eyes. Oh, what a great healing. So now I have that ability to see broken hearts and and really what my skill, if I have one, is to hear the lies that someone is believing that has formed their identity, false identity, and robbed them of their true identity. Uh, on the spiritual direction website of the Institute for Priestly Formation, in helping Adrian with the school, I came across this phrase uh, in their description of what they hope to do. Relationship identity mission is the foundation of their school. Whew, I latched onto it. It now is the foundation of our school in Florida. Relation and it and it's so much a part of how people speak now 
which tells us how which tells me how grounded it is in the Holy Spirit. This wasn't just a, an idea that was an idea for a moment. This is an idea for eternity. So, looking at relationship, identity, mission, um, I constantly go back to that. And when I look at it in terms of God himself, the, the being of all beings, God as a being is a relationship. And as that relationship, what is his identity? Well, his identity is to be three persons, the three persons he is, to be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as a family. That's God's identity. No confusion in God. He has given us this model and made us in his image and likeness to become one with it. So his identity, God is in our relationship. His identity is to be who he is. And his mission, now that's kind of hard to describe because we're not gods. But we get through the scriptures in Jesus' life, we can see into, we know part of it. One of it is to create. He Creation came out of his, who he is, his identity. And look at the incredible creation, just taking bits and pieces of it. Majesty, grandeur immensity, beauty, all sorts of adjectives. Um, and he created us in his image and likeness. So we're created to co-create with him. I, that's another thing you could ponder forever, and I have. And I, I tell you, I know, how, I know how to go into the world where that's not who I am and set me into that world where it's who I am. It really takes everything I have because there's so much resistance to that fullness of God. Um, I thank God for showing me that, for shining the light in my darkness. Um, now, I know there's a time element here for my friend, and so I want to get right down to the business of sharing with her what God... I'm just going to read it because it's easier and, and more efficient. Woke up with my spirit, immersed in swimming, deep within the sacred heart of Jesus. One word describes this encounter. Revelation, revelation, revelation. That's the only way I learn for God to bring me into revelation because my thought process and everything about me is so strong, I want to keep defaulting into me, myself, and I. The Lord showed me the wounded, broken and warring, first time I ever got that word, hearts of people I know, spirits in those people I know. So there were names and faces. One of the faces the next day was you for whom I am making this. But this is the day before, because it really is the word for you too. The Holy Spirit impressed on me God's desire to heal every single heart. Your heart, my heart, our spouse's heart, our husband's heart, our wife's heart, our children's hearts. And we tend to, as human beings, we make the mistake of thinking that we are can do it or that we're responsible. And, so, and out of that comes a mindset, like I heard from one person who feels... They are their the the grace is given to them to be crucified and to just bear up and no matter what happens to to cling to that crucifixion. I used to think that way. Now I realize the crucifixion is necessary for me to cling to to get to the cross, but the end product is not pain and with and suffering. Um, it is resurrection. Now, if martyrdom is involved in that, God gives us the grace to be martyrs. And there's a little, you know, dying to self, which is always part of that, what they call white martyrdom. But his goal is not for us to be latching on to the severity and the uh, dying and the bleeding. Is that part of it? Yes. But it's a part of it. It's not the whole thing. So, 
Um, she said things like, uh, let's see. Take This is what quote. You wrote this. Take up your cross. Embrace the death required of you. In the present moment, follow me. Boy, do they sound like anointed words. Take up your cross. Embrace the death. In the present moment, follow me. That means follow me out of the crucifixion. Follow me to resurrection. That's what that means. It took me a long time to process that one, but I'm there now. And then um, you wrote, the word tamed my fear of loss. Full of grace. I saw that Jesus is right before me as each moment reveals what that moment contains. I have no other task than to embrace it exactly as it is. Stick close to him who's making a path through it right in front of me. Those words, I read them, I think I pulled them out of the, the writing that she sent. That's exactly right. That part, that part of what the what what was coming, what you were hearing the Lord say, it's how do you is right on. But if we think the goal is death, not resurrection from death, we tend to embrace death. I knew how to die with the best of them. I loved Holy Saturday. I and Good Friday. It was the resurrection part that I had hadn't integrated into that mystery. And as long as I was focused on death, I was only going to get death. And I wasn't, and I was going, but what I do, what did I do? Because I'm not a, I, I'm not a person who can live in death. Nobody is. I had to keep jumping over, jumping over to get to Easter Sunday and resurrect. Now that's pretty tricky to do, but I had that mastered from childhood on. I figured out a way, die, uh, suffer, die, be in the tomb with Jesus all day on Holy Saturday, wake up and put that behind me, but I never was able to link it and integrate it. So my dear friend, what I, what I, what did I see for you? I saw the Lord wanting your heart. He says, give me your heart. Give it to me. Don't hold on to any part of it because it's wounded and broken. And the more you give him your heart, the more he gives you his. So in this relationship, I really feel it's a call to heart. It's a call to uh, bring your heart, reveal your heart, risk, trust. And in revealing your heart, the people around you will see um, what you've been enduring, and how much love you have for God and for them because you're doing it out of love for them too. I don't think they see that. I don't know. I didn't think anybody. I I thought I was supposed to hide that. Boy, if I showed any part of that, there was reprimand. My parents, my father did it silently, never talked about it. My mother did, ha however she did it, did it a different way. But I was taught, no, keep that hidden. No, no. I'm supposed to not keep it hidden. Bring my heart out into the light. For all to see, but present it to Jesus. And I have done that. And when I do that, I'm happy, joyful, love. I love my life. I love, love, love my life. I'm so grateful to God. And when I was in my death cycle, going, jumping over Holy Saturday into Easter Sunday, I couldn't say I loved my life. It was a job, it was work. I was constantly doing the work so I could pop out and experience God. Now I experience God, and what I'm doing around me isn't work at all. I love you. I love you. I, I love your heart. I love your personhood. I love your strength. I love your perseverance. And my heart, take my heart with you today. Take my heart. Let's share heart so we go together. Let's come together in heart. And then in coming heart, Jesus will come and surround us. And he will be, it's that entity that will live in you and me. Amen. <laughs>